Hey there, welcome to the Uxip channel, and obviously this is not an ukulele, and I am not a violin player, but this is the E-Star 4-4 violin, full-size violin, uh, with marker dots on it. And I wanted to do a review of this really quickly. I'm coming at this review with some extra feedback from my orchestra colleague at my school, because I don't know enough about it. Ever since I was a music major back in college, I've wanted a violin. I've stayed away from them because I just don't know enough about them. If you saw the unboxing, I was surprised that the violin bridge is is uh, asymmetrical. Um, you know, coming from the mindset that it should be uh, symmetrical, like an ukulele if it's with a radius or fretboard or a guitar. And I, I'm learning as I go, which is fun. That's the whole point of this. This whole kit is about $80 on Amazon. And clearly, when you buy this, you are not investing in an instrument that is going to be selling on auction someday for $1.6 million. No chance. So with that in mind, um, you get everything that you need to start off playing. So you get the violin that, of course, has the chin rest on it. It's a, it's a low chin rest. We'll talk about that. You get the bow. And let's show you some of the other things that you get with it. Lifting this up on the side here, you get some extra strings. You get a shoulder rest if you need it. You get rosin, and you get a second bridge, as well as a decent case. Um, it's not as fuzzy as it could be, but it will serve its purpose. And it has a little trapdoor compartment in there. So that's all really nice. I mean, that's that's kind of what you need to get going. But I was like worried about, you know, is this thing going to be any good? Is this something that you could recommend to someone? And the answer to that is kind of split. And, and we'll get to that. So my colleague thought that the finger position markers was kind of a cool thing. They often use tape across their violins for their beginners. Uh, the sound was acceptable. Uh, she didn't have any real complaints about the sound. And what she did say that was really good is it stays in tune. It's holding its tune very well. One of the concerns is that the pegs would be slipping and so forth. Um, more about the tuners, she also was very happy about the fact that it, she could tune with one hand. Now as an ukulele player, I'm finding the, the tuners very hard to tune and to work with, uh, but I'm used to geared tuners. These are friction peg tuners, like the original kind of concept. So it's different for her than it is for me uh, to use these, but she thought that was okay. Um, I would think that the laminate construction, this is laminate spruce, um, is not going to need humidification like a regular um, violin. A uh, regular violin, you need to buy what they call a humidifier, generally the dampant, and you um, you soak the dampant in preferred distilled water, and you put it into the sound hole um, there, into one of the F holes, and then... Um, it keeps the instrument humidified and not cracking and so forth. This, as a laminate instrument, should not really need that. Um, really what it comes down to is I think this is probably a good option for a student who is looking at trying out violin for a while, isn't sure if they want to commit, uh, perhaps even the half size or three-quarter size that they sell, and the whole kit for $80 currently in November of 2020 is about two and a half months rental generally of what it would cost to rent a violin from a music store. So in the process of one year of playing, a family could save $200 and actually kind of bank that or save that for a purchase of a better violin down the road if the student was actually going to invest in playing forever. So that's that's kind of where I come from it. Or it's great for someone like me who is older and just wants to play around and learn on a violin with no intention of ever playing it publicly or in a symphony or anything just for the sake of learning. So um, I'm not opposed to the idea and neither was my orchestra colleague. There are going to be some orchestra teachers out there who are going to not like this instrument and we'll get back to that. Now some negatives. There were some marks on this um, right out of the box. Uh, both some scuffs. I think you can see the scuff right there in the light. Um, scuffs like that. And then where um, the sort of paint had rubbed through or the finish had rubbed through. And um, they're, you know, like kind of like chewed up and left white marks underneath that finish uh, right out of the box. 
Now, again, it's an $80 violin for what I'm using it for. I That doesn't bother me, but some people, when they spend any money, they want what they buy to be perfect, and they might be disappointed in that. Um, the second thought, this is just coming as a non-violin player, is that there was no guide on how to set up the bridge. So I sort of had to look online. And, of course, I have some knowledge of things like bridges on ukuleles and things. So I'm not afraid to try things. And I was able to figure out generally where it went by reading online and so forth. And uh, my orchestra teacher friend said that I did a pretty good job. So um, she said it was in the right position and it was set up correctly. Um, so that's good. But quite honestly, the company could include just a little guide that maybe would go underneath the, the fretboard there. It's not really a fretboard. Whatever they call that. I need to look that up. Um, but anyway, they could make it so that it went up against their ukulele player talking about a violin, not a fretboard. But anyway, that fingerboard there um, underneath that uh, going to the bridge they could have a little guide that would help you do that even paper that you could lay in there and include almost for free or they could make it out of like clear plastic or something that'd be all right um, she also mentioned that the chin rest is a really low cup so people with long tall necks are going to feel cramped um, I suppose I could even be a little higher and that would be okay so um yeah, I don't know. And maybe that's ideally for students that would have a shorter neck. But at the point that a student is playing a 4-4 violin, uh, they would have a dun uh, dimensions of an adult anyway. Um, talking with my orchestra friends, and we teach, uh, she teaches 4th and 5th grade orchestra, although she plays professionally and everything else, um, a lot of students are at half size and three-quarter size up until uh, middle school and beyond. So with that in mind, the cup rest was, was pretty low for an adult or the chin rest was a little bit low. Uh, the, the tuners, again, um, were decent, but her concern was that they didn't go all the way through. She said it should be flush with the other end, not, uh, there's, you can see the white part of the finish in there. So she would have liked to have seen the tuners go all the way through. On a related tuner note, she said the fine tuners are really hard to turn, and they are. You have to add some force to tune them, but they are turnable. So um, I'm not having so much of a problem with it. And the fine tuners are kind of neat. What's what's kind of interesting is that uh, pro players don't have fine tuners on all four. Maybe they'll just have them on one string, um, you know, to tune very quickly or to fine tune, but they generally don't have it on all four. My orchestra teacher friend taught me that as well. Um, another concern was that the nut was a little bit sharp up here and her concern was that you might break the E string with time and as a person who's broken a few ukulele strings over time I get that. There was a concern about a possibility of a false E um, and a false E I had to look it up to find out what she was talking about he's talking about harmonics so it means that there's no longer a linear relationship with the length of the string and the pitch they're they're off kilter so um it could be that the string isn't consistent in its own makeup across the string um or the stiffness isn't consistent in other words the string itself is defective and then it'll be false and create weird harmonics and that was the concern she wasn't overly concerned about that but she she thought she might have heard that another concern of hers was while the bridge is actually placed correctly if you can see it does not rest. Those little feet on the bridge, I'll pull out the other one. Um, they are curved a little bit, but they don't rest perfectly flat on the violin. So I think that like a violin shop would work that and customize that until it was laid perfectly flat. Otherwise, she's worried that the, the bridge will warp perhaps and break over time. Um, and that's something to be concerned about. At the same time, uh, these bridges are completely replaceable and... Um, I did not realize that that this piece, while it's very important, um, is also massively replaceable. So as an ukulele player, if, if something happens to your bridge, um, you know, like the glue lets go, it's repairable, but it's that's not a minor fix. I mean, it's fixable, but at the same time, that's not so good. Well, bridges with violins is... Um, very common. So 
that's kind of interesting to to know. Another issue is that she wasn't sure how long this bow would put up. Um, upon further inspection, she thought the bow was better than some that she's seen, but she was concerned about its overall uh, lifetime. And she suggested even the purchase of what she called a glasser bow, another company, at for about the price of thirty to forty dollars. Something to think about. Her instant reaction was that this is far better than another instrument that costs about ninety dollars more on Amazon. Um, and she just called that one a piece of junk. And she said, "Well, this actually would be doable." So that said, I also need to let you know that. There are string teachers who would never, ever, ever give this a chance. Um, if they bought it, they would tell the student to return it or that they couldn't play it in their ensemble or they wouldn't teach them with that instrument. So, you know, as we get to the, the kind of conclusions here, I would not buy one of these without checking with your student's teacher first. So let's summarize really quickly. Um, again, it's an $80 violin kit with everything that you need to start. It was a little bit scruffier than I would have liked coming out of the box. It might be a good solution for a beginner like me, an older beginner like me, or for a student who doesn't want to spend between $25 and $30 a month for a rental fee, because quite honestly, three months pays for the violin. Ultimately, you could hold on to it for two years and put $400 towards the purchase of a much better instrument. Sounds like a win-win to me. Also, for students moving quickly through the sizes of half size, three quarter size, full size, it might be a good idea. I would not buy this without checking with your student's orchestra teacher. Not all orchestra teachers are going to have an open mind towards this kind of an instrument. And what my colleague said was this, and we were facing some financial crises in our, in our district and so forth, as many schools will be um, following the events of 2020. And her statement was, if we are going to have any semblance of the orchestra programs we once knew, we're going to need to be a little open-minded to other ideas um, that might make it affordable for students to play these instruments because they are worth playing. They are worth learning. But at this point, not all students and not all programs are going to be able to afford that. So if you have something like this that can help bridge that gap, it might be worth looking at. So that is the E-Star 4-4 size violin with the dots. Um, again, I'm not a great player. I'm hardly a player at all. So um, I'm just thrilled to have this and to take a look at it and to share it with you. And again, if it's something you're interested in, um, yeah, go for it. So thanks for watching this review of the E-Star 4-4 violin. I hope you're having a great day. And I will be back soon, not really with violin stuff, but with uke stuff.